Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Today is going to be um, somewhat of a different video to what I've recently uploaded because um, I don't have a lot of footage to insert whilst I'm talking, and if you understand what I mean. Um, and there's a reason for that, and that's the entire topic of the video. So yeah, today I'll just be chatting to the camera and um, it's all about the story, um, but there will be some cuteness, I promise, in the end. Um, I've got a cup of tea, so it's just a Sunday morning sit down and talk for me. Um, so Venus was um, due on Tuesday, it's Sunday now, so five days later, and um, that meant that she could safely um, give birth six days prior, so on the Wednesday uh, before. So since that Wednesday I've been sleeping next to Venus, just in case she gives birth very suddenly. Um, that didn't happen. Um, I um, took her temperature twice a day since that day and um, it was quite constant until the due date Tuesday morning. At six o'clock she had a drop in temperature and it was only 36.8 but a regular dog's temperature body temperature won't go below 37 so that was the indication that she was in the temperature drop phase and that would say that she would give birth within 12 to 24 hours so yeah that's kind of how it went that Tuesday morning I um, noticed that the temperature had dropped but when I measured it again at 8 o'clock so two hours later um, the temperature was back to 37 and Venus's regular body temperature is around 37.3 um, Usually dogs that are, do a lot of sports and are quite fit, um, they have a low body temperature. So that's why Venus's temperature is 37.3, 37.4. Um, because I know that some people might say, oh, but the regular temperature should, should be 38, 39. Uh, hers isn't. So that is what I thought. It, it was already the ending of that temperature do drop. So I contacted her breeder and uh, sent him lots of videos to show her behavior because she had lots of um, intention to go for a wee and to poop, but uh, she couldn't. There was barely anything to, um, to go out of the body. So that kind of showed that she had um, her first contractions and um, that she, her body was getting ready to start giving birth. Um, so he said, yep, on my way, I'll be there in a bit. And he was here for most of the day, but she didn't give birth. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, it's still, it's quite normal. But at 6 p.m. we took her temperature again and we saw that it was 36.5. So that morning apparently I had just caught the start of that temperature drop and it was still going. Um, at 8 in the evening, the temperature drop was over. Um, but then um, that meant that the pups could be born during the night. So Mabrida went home because he had a lot of other stuff to do and he basically gave the reins to a friend of ours who was also a breeder who lives very close and um, she um, yeah she was on standby and I could text her and call her the entire night should I need her um, because I obviously would prefer not to do birth uh, alone because I haven't done that before um, and um, yeah it's, I mean everything can go wrong right so that um, I could call her but Venus slept through the night and um, yeah all was well really and it was only at around 1 p.m. on Wednesday so a day after her due date that was uh, she was uh, 64 days um, into her pregnancy she indicated that she wanted to go outside uh, and she was crying and panting heavily and um, she couldn't pee, she couldn't poop so we went back inside, she pulled me uh, back home and um, when we came back indoors there was a lot of um, mucus coming from her behind um, so that was the first flow of fluids that would moisten the area so that the pups could come through safely um, so yeah, birth had started um, and at that point, um, Diana, um, the breeder who lives close, a friend of ours, she um, was at work, but she told me I'm free to go if you want me to. So eventually I said, yeah, please do come. Um, I'm not sure how long this will take, but if you have a couple hours, I would love it if you're here. 
um, and then I think in the time before she came Venus had around three contractions or so not many um, but she was very very stressed or at least she was in labor she was panting heavily so she was getting ready so Diana started massaging Venus's body and it was clear that Venus wanted her to come to the whelping box I'm pointing that because I'm looking at them <laughs> at the moment Venus and her puppies um, you will see her in a bit um, but yeah um, so Diana followed her and within five minutes um, she gave one small push and um, the sac the amnion um, came out so really within that short amount of time of her giving her a massage and just being a relaxing a relaxing presence which Diana really is she's uh, she's very kind and and welcoming and warm and I think that's I think that helped um, I mean it's really calmed down and um, yeah but she didn't have any further contractions and as long as that sac is there if the dog doesn't have any extremely powerful contractions and the puppy is in the birth canal it's fine it's safe um, but we could see one end of the body we didn't know if it was the back of the front or the front of the dog but um, yeah so the puppy was through basically it was through the birth canal it just had to pop out but she didn't contract so we took the time because it's still safe at that point the puppy is still alive uh, there's no potential damage for Venus or the other puppies um, and there's nothing else you can do than wait at that point um, and in this area by the way veterinarians do not visit you um, at home so um, in Amsterdam that's all a bit different you have a couple emergency clinics and that's it you can't really pop into your vets um, unexpected so what we did was wait and give her massages and help her push like if she was laying down we would hold her back legs so she could um, put pressure onto, onto uh, Diana's hands for example and um, but she didn't 45 minutes in Venus accidentally stepped onto that sack with her heel and the sack broke and this means that within three seconds that puppy would be dead that's the that's the the gist of it so Diana gave her a couple seconds and then felt inside to see if she could grab the head but she couldn't she could feel it but she couldn't wrap her finger around it so she calmly said right now the puppy is dead are you prepared for this because we will have to move on after this puppy there will be a next another and another and another so um, yeah so we were prepared for the worst um, but this point again this is all about Venus for us uh, Venus was safe Venus was fine um, so we waited five minutes and nothing happened so then the next phase started we had to go to the vet because we didn't want her to stay in labor for any longer than absolutely necessary because it's so tiring and because the temperature drop started around 32 hours prior she was tired she was knackered so um, then having to push out more puppies for a long time that was something we didn't want her, her to do if it wasn't absolutely necessary um, because she was already sh she was done she was done she did not have any contractions and the, the few tiny ones that she had had no no power at all so I kind of went into the um, emergency protocol that I had set up so I think 10 days before birth I called an emergency clinic basically it's a it's a clinic that you can go to if your dog has quite specific problems we went there with Mojo um, to have a look at her hips and elbows um, and you need a reference from your vet to uh, visit that clinic in the evenings and during the night they are an emergency clinic and during the day they're a specialists clinic so you can only visit them if you have made arrangement arrangements prior so I called them and asked should my dog go into labor and anything go wrong can I then visit your practice um, if my veterinarian gives the okay because our veterinarian which is I think an eight minute drive or so they they don't currently have um, an operation room so 
because there is some water damage from a, a fire next door so they can't do any, anything in emergency they currently have one vet there instead of two because the second room is not in use um, so they said yep that's fine if you get a reference straight away just have them call us and you're welcome to come um, so then I called our veterinarian they said no we really can't do anything in our uh, OR because we can't use it but we will call them if it's necessary and you can pop in there straight away so um, I called the other clinic again I said yep yeah, they will call said that it's fine and you can come here should it be necessary and I only did this because I thought well it's a, it's a backup plan you know usually birth goes well but it didn't um, so I do have some footage and I think I will have inserted that prior I'm not sure um, where I'll put it but I have some footage and of course I wanted to film everything but at this point we were all in kind of like a shock um, because we were now here with a dog in labor a puppy not stuck but not moving either because she couldn't um, she couldn't contract and we had to leave so I called um, our veterinarian I explained the scenario and um, she was very kind I told her we need a reference please call the uh, the center that they will be there in 20 minutes because it was a 15 minute drive and we had to pack up the dog still so yeah 20 minutes right yes calling them so five minutes later I called the center I said we'll be there in 15 minutes and uh, you should have a reference through soon we don't have it yet she said but you can come over two minutes before arriving at the center we had a call from our vet a different um, veterinary assistant um, was on the line and she said yeah would you uh, please explain everything that's going on because I don't understand and uh, yeah I need to know because we have to find a practice and I was shocked because we were around the corner at that point from the clinic that we were supposed to go to and I said well I told you the other assistant everything she needed to know the practice that I'm going to knows everything that they need to know so I'm not sure why you want me to explain it because I'm heading in now and she said yeah but you can't go there because they don't have a surgeon so we've been on the road for 20 minutes and we had at that point arrived outside and they didn't have a surgeon and I wasn't told that by the other uh, by the person at the clinic themselves which is so weird but also they told us that I could come in an emergency and it wasn't possible so that was very odd but we were outside so I jumped out of the car took Venus inside and I said I'm sorry I just called I'm here for an emer emergency and I've now just heard that I can't get can't get any help and they said oh yeah but yeah no we don't have a surgeon but we can check her out we can like we can feel um, internally to see what's wrong and we can help her and we can do a full checkup I'm, I was like no I don't want a full checkup she needs uh, a c-section because at that point um, it had been a good 30 minutes after the sack broke um, so that's really long and um, she was also walking in the clinic dropping some uh, fluids and uh, she was so stressed and then this idiot woman with a Labrador um, let the dog all the way at the end of the leash bark in Venus's face is like one of those things that always happens but then it just shouldn't happen at that point does it it's like no we we were quite stressed um so um but Diana did most of the talking for me because she's experienced in this and she said we do not want a checkup we want a c-section can we get it here no okay then we're leaving because we don't want to wait for nothing so as, w as we were walking out the all the sounds in the background that's the puppies and venus <laughs> uh, so as we were walking out the clinic uh the woman at the uh, at the counter said no no but we can help you we can we just don't we can't do a surgery uh, a c-section but we can help you and we ignored her because we did not want uh, any research done she had no contractions whatsoever if she would contract the puppy in the birth canal would possibly damage her because at that point the amnion the sac that should protect him and also uh, him her being the puppy and also venus um that wasn't there so it 
it wouldn't have gone down well. Um, so I was back on the line with the other vet and I was quite pissed because they could have told us before they had 15 minutes to do that and they didn't um, because we could have then turned around and we would have been at the same cl the other clinic in approximately the same time because it's just a different exit and uh, we would have made it there quite soon now that is an emergency clinic but still always you have you have to know if there's a there's a veterinarian um, available at the moment because there might be another um, surgery uh, or two going on at that point um, but they called and yes we could go there so we headed over to the other clinic where Venus actually had a tooth surgery in the past um, she had a broken canine so we were also um, uh, we knew the clinic already which is good just like the other one so I walked in with Venus and at that point straight after walking in she sh she shook herself and um, all the uh, the fluids came running out so all of the fluids that were still surrounding the puppy apparently had now really left the body um, and that is really when I gave up hope for that puppy because should it be in a vacuum with uh, the moisture around it and without any contractions there was still a possibility that it would not have started breathe breathing and hence still be alive um, but at that point we were like no okay that's over um, and again stuff like this can happen you have to be prepared for that and we were but it was still we didn't hope that that would happen you know so then they led us into um, a consultation room and it ended up being 35 minutes before they took Venus away um, oh yeah just gonna do this just gonna do that I'll be back in just a bit and just a bit would always be 10 minutes um, and it was the most frustrating one and a half hours honestly it was ugh, no it wasn't good um, but then uh, eventually they took Venus um, and they said we, we will be back in 20 minutes with the first puppy um, as soon as it's breathing uh, you can hold it and wait for the other puppies to be brought and then for Venus to be brought to you 35 minutes passed instead of 20 so I kindly asked the um, girl at the desk I asked her I'm sorry I was supposed to get a puppy here 15 minutes ago but nothing has happened I have not been informed on what's happening um, and at this point the only thing we were worried about well not the only thing but the major thing we were worried about was Venus of course because it's a surgery it's still anesthetics um, and we just And we were just worried that she wouldn't pull through because even though she's healthy, it's still, it's a surgery, you don't know. And then at that point, she said, oh yeah, yeah, uh, they, they really can't leave your dog at the moment. Yeah, they're very busy, so no, 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 it's taking a bit longer. And that made me even more stressed because at the point where you're supposed to see a dog, 15 minutes ago, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. The last thing you want to hear is that they are super busy and they can't leave your dog. If they initially said it would take a very short amount of time. Now, five minutes later, uh, another assistant came by and she was really kind. And she said, I want to congratulate you on six living puppies. And I was like, six? Whoa. So she had seven then because, right, the other one is dead. What do you mean, dead puppy? No, she had six. They were all alive. I said, so the puppy in the birth canal? Yep, it was alive. So apparently what we think happened is that only the head was in the vacuum and there was enough um, like amnion fluid around it to prevent it from starting to breathe and because she didn't have any contractions there was no pressure on the puppy either to activate it, which usually happens. Like the the combination of the strength with which it's it's pushed through the birth canal, and um, then the um, the lack of fluids will make the puppy start breathing, and then the mum will cut the uh, the amnion cord. But n none of that happened, um, so it's alive, and we have no clue which puppy it is either because they're all. They're all super active and um, there's no no real differences either so yep six puppies um 
and then I think half an hour later they came um, they came out to the waiting room with a big box uh, a heated box with six puppies and we had expected that most of them would be white or um, pied with a lot of white um, they're all Venuses <laughs> Um, there's one fawn and five red and um, yeah they all have the black mask that Venus has and their white markings are a bit different and of course because they're red they're a lot darker than Venus is but uh, yeah they're so similar to her um, none are similar in color to uh, the father um, in body and in head shape they are but um, yeah it's, it's very cool to see that um, she had a lot of influence in the way they uh, they look color wise there are five girls and one male we had expected five puppies um, but there are six and the male has a cleft lip uh, which is a which is a mutation um, so this is a dog that can't be bred in the future um, and it depends on type of breeder you are if you want to keep the dog alive because and that sounds quite cruel but since the life expectations for the first couple of weeks are according to some people quite slim um, the puppy will basically have to fight to survive um, but we decided to to keep it because the uh, the gums the up upper the roof of the mouth was completely closed and um, yeah we, we couldn't we couldn't leave a puppy um, so yeah we are currently helping him a little bit um, because um, you might know that puppies they know how to drink they um, basically they push against the belly and they pull with their mouth and that's instinctively how it goes but he but he couldn't yet at that point because he had to learn how to create a vacuum between the nipple and his tongue um, so we're using a like a baby bottle phase two um, to feed him extra and um, he's doing really well and he's now learning how to create a vacuum and how to suck and that's also made him uh, better at drinking at Venus um, so he's doing well he's quite a different type from the from all the females he's quite slim and not necessarily just uh, he, he didn't do less growing but he's a lot less wide in body because the the girls are all quite big <laughs> um, Venus and Freddie are both quite uh, slim, slender, um, sportsy, um, but um, in both pedigrees, both sides uh, are lots of heavier, taller dogs and I think they had a lot of influence because these dogs are big, um, but yeah. Um, the surgery went well, well, Venus recovered uh, from the anesthetic quickly and that all went well, so that's good. Um, we. Um, came home I think at 7 um, and then we just we helped her uh, with everything because due to the surgery she was um, super tired and super distracted and she didn't really yet know what was going on uh, she had to learn to wash the puppies and she had to learn that she could lay down and that they had to drink so we basically set an alarm for every hour after they stopped drinking so if the pups would drink for 15 minutes we would then set an alarm for 60 minutes later and then we would just tell her to lay down to go into the whelping box because she didn't want to be there she wanted to cuddle with us because she wasn't feeling well of course and um, she's dreaming at the moment <laughs> and then um, yeah we just helped her out um, so we would put the puppies next to her belly if she laid down on the wrong side of the of the box and then um, yeah we'd just let her do a thing and then she would also at the, at the first two times or so she didn't want to lay down and then afterwards she just got it and uh, it's beautiful to see that even though she had such a tough surgery she she just knows what to do she just needed a bit of convincing well yeah, this meant that we haven't slept a whole lot the past couple days um, they're now uh, four days old um, almost and um, they're doing really well um, we are now feeding the male once every four hours um, but we also make sure that first he is drinking at Venus 
uh, for a bit um, so that he can practice and that he can get good food and then we make some uh, milk for him mm. yeah and give him an opportunity to drink a bit more um, but he's growing fast so uh, a lot more than he needs to so it's going really well um, yeah that's the story of uh, last Wednesday it's a long one and I know that not everybody's going to watch this whole thing but if you're still here thanks for watching because I, yeah it, it was a rough day and it's nice to just sit down and talk about it without getting emotional because it was just not the way we hoped it would go um, yeah so. okay I'm gonna pick up the camera I'm gonna have a sip of tea pick up the camera and then show you the puppies because uh, Venus is currently very calm she's got some stressful moments which is very normal for a new uh, mum and they don't know where to go like they want food but they also want to go to the puppy but they also want to pee and then they don't know where to go um, they don't know what to do so they just start pacing and whining um, and then we just have to figure out what's going on and usually after she's had her wee and she had her food which she has quite often both of them um, then she will do a, lo a lot of pacing for another 15 minutes and then she can calm down and she's now been quiet for over an hour so that's good and the puppies have been drinking as well yeah so um, yeah I'll show, the, show you the puppies and you will be introduced to them in a future video seeing them up close one by one um, but for now I'll just uh, show you the beauty there in that well themed box Right, that was it for today's video. We will be back on Wednesday or Thursday with a weekly vlog. Um, I'm not sure which day I'll be, I'll be uploading them. Um, but yeah, a whole lot more cuteness to come. Uh, I'm excited and I'm also so glad that I can, I'm filming this because I can just look back anytime I want. Take care.